This is my new book, a biography of the man who could plausibly be called the first king of England. It's to Athelstan, as the subtitle of the book suggests, that we owe the making of England. But he was not its only maker. There was also his grandfather, Alfred the Great, and his father, Edward. All three kings certainly rank as England's founding fathers, but astonishingly and heroically, there was also a founding mother. Alfred's daughter, Edward's sister, Athelstan's aunt. Her name? Athelflad. Athelflad was the daughter of Alfred, the King of Wessex in the south of England, but she was married by Alfred to Athelred, who ruled Mercia here in what is now called the Midlands. And Athelred's status was very ambivalent. Some called him king, others called him elder man, leading uh, aristocrat. By his subject, he was called Miknachlafad, Lord of the Mercians. And Athelflad, when in due course, she succeeded to the rule of Mercia after Ethelred's death, would be known by the Mercians as Lady of the Mercians. Wessex and Mercia were originally independent kingdoms, but in the second half of the ninth century, Mercia and all the English kingdoms, save for one, were overwhelmed by the onslaught of fearsome invaders. In 873, a fleet of Viking dragon ships came gliding up the River Trent. They made their base over there, at Repton. More than an insult, this was a desecration. Repton was a shrine to Mercian royal power. But that power now was broken. Mercian kingship had been trampled into the dust. The independence of Mercia was dead. Of all the previously independent kingdoms in England, only one was left standing, Wessex, ruled by Alfred the Great. By terms of a treaty he signed with the Vikings after defeating them in battle in 878, Mercia was divided into rival spheres of influence, Anglo-Saxon to the west, Viking to the east. It was the western rump that Athelred ruled, and to which, when he fell sick and then died, Athelflaed succeeded. As Mirna Hlafdiga, Lady of the Mercians, she believed herself charged by God with the defence of her people. And sometimes that required her to go on the attack. In the year 909, Athelflaed sent an expedition to Bardney, deep in Viking territory, there to obtain the relics of Oswald, a potent warrior saint of Northumbria, whose relics brought back here to Gloucester and enshrined in a magnificent priory, served to endow Gloucester, this great Roman city that had been repaired, renewed, refortified by Athelflaed with the charge of this great warrior saint. Athelflaed's capture of St. Oswald's bones hadn't just won her some potent relics. It had also infuriated the Vikings, and the following year, sure enough, they launched their own reprisal invasion. But as they retreated, laden down with plunder, they made a crossing at a place near here, perhaps on this very spot, Weddensfield, the Field of Woden. And it was here that they were ambushed by Athelflaed's forces. The Vikings were felled beneath a rain of Mercian spears. Three of their kings, we're told by a chronicler, were killed, sent down to the halls of the infernal lord. An entire generation of Vikings was incapacitated. The slaughter of the Vikings at Woden's Field bore witness to the heroic scale of Athelflaed's preparations. She had built a whole chain of burrs or fortresses along the frontier with the Vikings. And one of these burrs stood very close to Wednesfield. 
It's good to know that the Lady of the Mercians hasn't been completely forgotten in Mercia. Here we are, for instance, in Wensbury, the Burr of Woden, where Ethelflaed was meant to have built a fort on the top of the hill. And there's a statue of her next to the bus stop and next to the Morrison's car park. But these burrs built by Athelflaed and her brother Edward, the King of Wessex, which came to stretch in a great line from the Mersey to Essex, were not merely fortresses. This coin ranks as the foundation charter of England. It was minted by Athelflaed in Chester, a Roman ruin which she renovated, and it shows a tower, perhaps the bulwark of a gate or a church. But either way, it symbolises her great project of urban regeneration. The burrs founded by Athelflaed and by Edward, her brother, were not merely for the purposes of war. They also looked ahead to the prospects for peace. The two of them, in a very literal way, were laying the foundations of England. Shield of her people, Athelflaed wore about her the palpable aura of queens of ancient song. Across Ireland, fantastical stories were told of her prowess, of how when the Vikings attacked Chester, the defenders poured boiling beer over their assailants and even dropped beehives so that the attackers could move neither their arms nor their legs because of the stinging of the bees. So increasingly, both Athelflaed and her brother Edward, the King of Wessex, were putting Viking England in their shadow. And this coin perfectly illustrates it. It has Edward's name on it, but it's clearly faked, reflecting the economic muscle and reach that Edward was starting to have. And by 917, he was ready for the Great Offensive. He stormed the frontiers of the Danelaw, he penetrated deep into East Anglia, and within a year, he'd brought it all under his rule. Meanwhile, further north, Athelflaed too was playing her part. A chronicler recorded how, with the help of God, she conquered the town called Derby, and there within the gates, four of her thanes most dear to her were slain. Her feats were very great, but then the following year in 918, in the stronghold of Tamworth, once the capital of the kings of Mercia, and restored by Athelflaed herself, she died. The body of the Lady of the Mercians, sent to Gloucester, was buried here in the priory that she had built next to the relics of St Oswald. Six years after the death of Athelflaed, Edward, her brother, also died and he was succeeded by his son Athelstan and Athelstan was crowned here in Kingston-upon-Thames, reputedly on this very stone in 925. He was crowned as the King of Wessex, as the King of Mercia. Everywhere south of the Humber owed him lordship. But there was more to come. This coin here has Athelstan's name and his title, Rex, King. But on the other side, we have the name of the Munnia, uh, Regnald, and we know from that that this was minted in York, which Athelstan captured in 927. And having done that, he could then plausibly claim to be Rex Anglorum, King of all the English. But that wasn't the limit of his ambitions, because if we look at this other coin, also minted in York, and we can see that because we get the name Regnald again, on the obverse, there is a a dramatic new title that Athelstan has awarded himself, and that is Rex To Brit, Rex Totius Britanniae, King of the whole of Britain. Athelstan was laying claim to the rule of a British empire. A great warrior, ever victorious in battle, he also governed his people, wrote one chronicler, with the utmost concern for law and for education. And if his empire of Britain fell by the wayside after his death, then the kingdom of England 
did not. Athelstan really does deserve, I think, to be much better remembered than he is. But if that's true of Athelstan, then it's also true of the really remarkable woman who was his aunt, his instructress, his model, perhaps. Athelflad, Lady of the Mercians. <laughs> <laughs>